whenever you're ready. Imagine, if you would, a world of reclusive, antisocial heaps of flesh bereft of passion, empathy, or humanity. That may be a pretty bleak and unrealistic outlook on our future, but it's still something to look or something to think about, given that we may be headed down that path. What would constitute such a bleak outlook on our future? Of course, it's the demise of libraries. Emotion, ambition, intelligence, love, hatred, empathy, adventure. These are words associated with what can be encountered at a library. These things, though very human, are quickly wilting from our society with the onset of quick, detaching technology aimed at instant gratification and a reduction in phys physical society and interaction. Libraries have both been a source of knowledge and a social hub for interaction between like-minded intellectuals. Libraries must continue to thrive in order for a facet of our humanity to remain intact. Though I'm not a librarian, nor have I ventured down that track in academia, I have used them for all my life and will continue to do so as long as I'm able. A few of my close friends have gone down the library science track and have made me aware of the perilous jeopardy that our beloved libraries are encountering. We must act in order to save not only funding for the libraries, but to facilitate the continuation of the social interactions and benefits by which these institutions provide. Throughout the next few minutes, we'll discuss the benefits of libraries throughout the years, the ramifications of losing them, and the future that a library-safe world will provide. As with everything in a changing world, justifications must be made for anything and everything. Libraries, both public and academic, are under a threat of disappearing completely from our society. Legislation in Florida and the rest of the United States is advocating for the reducing the funding amounts for these integral institutions by drastic amounts. Libraries, as noted in The Value of Academic Libraries by Megan Oakleaf, insist that these centers for development and study are both useful and needed as a place of academic enhancement and a quiet place for one to reflect on that which they are studying. How many times have you gone to Strozier? and studied for an exam. How many times have you gone to Dirac if you're a biology uh, music library? If you haven't, then you should. What's going to happen if we lose these? The loss of these facilities will be a blow to some of the base fundamentals of our interactive society. Libraries are not only a place to discover, discover and deposit knowledge, but they're also a social hub for the acquisition of knowledge through networking, interacting, and meeting other people who share the same intellectual interests. Furthering the notion of disconnected, disconnection from interaction, in the role of value of public libraries in the digital age of technologies from the Journal of Information Science, it suggests that with the loss of social hubs of knowledge, our society may become even less interactive with the onset of instant messaging and texting. Extraneous and instantaneous information is available throughout the internet and requires little, if any, interaction with another human being. While convenient at some times, the overall effect on our society of essentially desensitizing ourselves from human interaction is an outcome by which we can't pro project with any certainty. Libraries are only one facet of that overlying problem, but is indeed one of the main foundation pillars. How many of you spent a day or more at your public library when you were growing up? For a day camp, for who remembers the book room, bookmobile? In Tracking Trends in the Future of Worthington by Amy Ratkin, it illustrates the effective bonus of children who use libraries as opposed to those who didn't over a 15 year study. The statistics were staggeringly more in favor for those who were brought up using libraries in their youth than those deprived of that privilege. We as a society cannot afford to lose these multifunctioning places of knowledge. We must do something to further the funding of public and academic libraries. <laughs> Plain and simple. <clears throat> Although a solution isn't easily obtained for a topic concerning funding legislation, things of that matter, steps can easily be taken to ensure that your voice is heard. As can't be an ineffective as it may seem, writing your local congressman, representative, or politician actually goes a long way. 
Many propositions, acts, legislation, and proposed laws have been nullified or at least reconsidered because of an outcry of the populace. The need to further the funding of library institutions can, unfortunately, only be done by legislation. The funding for the state and federally funded facilities can only be changed or decreased by legislation. The same way that funding is decreased, it can also be lobbied to increase. Budget cuts are extremely common reducing program capacities often without public knowledge. Just recently in Florida, a proposition that would enable campsites to be built on Hollywood Island was shot down by an enormous outcry by the people of that community. Such a showing of force and representation by the constituents of that community forced the proposition to be reconsidered and must have <coughs> been revoked. I believe it's still under consideration. Contacting our local authorities is only the first step. We must be strong in our resolve to follow the demand to continue funding for libraries to the end. Libraries are and have been the center of our societies. The basis for knowledge has always needed a repository for the accumulation of facts, theories, and hypotheses, and in that need was born the library. Storage, both physical and virtual, of knowledge is essential in humanity's endeavor to better themselves and their surroundings. In The Organizational Change to Meet the Digital Challenge by Stephen Parnell, a plan is outlined in how to reorganize these library facilities to meet both academic and public, to meet with the changing and fast-paced world. Though things can be adapted and updated, the primary function as a social hub for knowledge would still be maintained. Visualize a world without a physical place for children to go, to learn about dinosaurs, galaxies, electronics. Imagine a place in society where there's no central library on the campuses of college life. Not only are said libraries a place for academic discovery, they're also a place to congregate in preparation for examinations, quizzes, and term papers. Imagining a place and time without the physical realm of libraries is quickly becoming a reality. In a viable future for small and rural libraries by Joseph Nye, the author proposes that unless something is quickly done to ensure the stability of funding future for these institutions, they will be in great danger. With the advent of the internet and digitized sources, many are assuming that these repositories are obsolete and not needed. With the constant need to save and conserve money, it is, e it is easy to overlook the fact that losing a library not only does a disservice to the public, it does a disservice to humanity. Now that you see the need and the outcome of losing these important facilities, it's time to act. Now more than ever, there's a need for all of us who've benefited from a library to at some point in our collective lives to make yourselves known. The ability and privilege of us as a society to keep these institutions of knowledge around must be stressed. These facilities not only represent knowledge, but they represent ambition, invention, and humanity at its finest. We must all recognize that without a library in our childhood, our childhood would have been somewhat incomplete. There would be a void of which no internet site or digitized encyclopedia could fill. Libraries are a center of knowledge and a center of our society. We must do what must be done to keep them where they are. Remember this librarian's anecdote. Google can get you an answer. A librarian can get you a right answer. Thank you.